Okay, so welcome to part two, not three, uh, of this series. Um, for some reason I can't count when doing these videos, so, yeah. Um, so, just carrying on from where we left off, um, the next thing we're going to do is include this init file in the two pages. So, if we just go to our bad page uh, and include the file. So, we're going to be including the file from the core folder, and the file name is init.inc.php. I'm just going to copy this line and paste it into the error list page. Hit save. There we go. So now if we, re if we reload our bad page, we will hopefully not get any errors. Oh, we do. Uh, I can't spell. Good news. Uh, hopefully that didn't annoy too many people. It's a. I don't even know how I did that. Uh, there we go. <laughs> and there we go. So that is that's the kind of error that will be logged. <laughs> eventually, and I might demonstrate that. So, um, now the errors have gone. This means that we have successfully connected to the database and that the files have been included. Um, this page will just display the same, absolutely nothing, um, because it currently doesn't do anything. So, uh, that is basically it for the including. Um, so the next thing we need to do is create the function that actually logs the errors. Um, and the way we're going to do this is using the PHP function uh, set error handler. And what this does is it defines the function that PHP uses to display errors instead of the default. So the default, if you like, is sort of a function that just outputs the error to the screen. And instead of that, we are going to log it to a database. Um, so I'm just going to call the function here. It's set error handler with underscores, and it takes uh, two parameters. The first parameter is the name of the function that we're going to be um, creating in a minute. The name of the function that you want to use to log the errors. So this is just going to be log error. Um, and we'll define, we're going to define this function in the backend file in a moment. Um, and the second parameter is the level of errors that you want to log. So for just for this we're going to define this as e all, which is generally quite a good level um, because this, in this includes notice messages um, which sort of can highlight problem th problems with your script. So it's quite a good idea to pay attention to those. And also it will show you if people are like messing around with the form variables because it will come up as undefined variable index, that's it. So then once, once we've defined um, this line uh, sort of function here, um, this is telling PHP that instead of outputting the messages, error messages to the screen, we're going to send them to this function. Obviously at the moment if we reload our page this won't actually work. Um, yeah, you see, it tells you that it's the log error function is not a valid callback. Um, callback is just um, sort of a term used to define um, sort of when a function is called by its name, kind of, anyway. Um, so this here is a callback um, and PHP will call this as a function. Um, can be a little bit confusing as a term, but it's not really that complicated, it's just the name of a function and PHP will call it. So going back to our error logging backend file, um, we're just going to define this function here. So we can do the standard function log error. Log error is obviously the name of the function. The function keyword just defines that it is a function. And then this block just denotes the code that is should be considered part of that function. Um, we need to have this function uh, take four parameters. The first one is the error type, so this is like the value of the error constant. Like we passed to the um, we passed to this function e all, so this will uh, be any error constant like that. So it could be e notice or e warning. So this is going to be uh, error type. The next parameter is error string. The next one is error file, and the final one is error line, not linf line. Um, I believe that's correct. Hopefully it is. Um, so these are just what I explained before basically. Uh, the error type is what I just said, the notice, um, sorry, the error level constant value of the error that's occurred. Um, the error string is just the description of what went wrong. The file is the file it happened in and the line is the line it happened in. So if we just do like um, echo um, Let's just do error string for now. This will sort of mimic what PHP does by default, 
except that it won't show all of the information, it'll just show the file and the line. Sorry, it won't show the file and the line, it'll show the string. So if we go to our bad page and just cause an error by doing echo uh, nothing again and reload our page you can see we get undefined variable nothing and you'll notice that the rest of the information is missing and that our um, sort of nice formatting well I say nice um, a red color and different font is also missing so this is like what's been output by our function and the actual error handler has been bypassed so we've just gone straight to this without showing the actual sort of message so going back to our function code if we were to do um, well just sort of anything uh, why not spelt wrong not spelt wrong okay see so we get anything output so this is just sort of to show that you can basically do anything at all in this function it doesn't have to be just outputting the error messages in fact outputting them directly is a completely pointless use of this function because that's not what it's for that's already what happens you don't want to do that again uh, okay, so what we're going to do in here is instead of outputting the message, we are going to actually insert it into a table. Uh, and before we do that, we need to make sure that this data is safe uh, because SQL injection is sort of generally always possible. So the error type, actually, I could just do this error type uh, just to show you that the error types are integers, so we get eight instead of like the value, which would normally be something like e underscore notice. Like normally you get an error message that starts with that and then there's the message like undefined things spelled wrong not normally spelled wrong so that's like the actual value of that constant uh, I could just demonstrate that as well by just doing echo e underscore notice if I reload the page again we just still get 8 okay so we have 8 for the error type and that's what we're going to be inserting into the table so to make sure that it's a secure variable, um, we're just going to cast it to an integer, error type equals int error type. Um, for the error string, we need to, to apply the MySQL real escape string function, so let's just do that, error string equals, oops, this should be tabbed a bit further to make it look neat, so error string equals MySQL real escape string. Um, error string like so then we need to do the same for the error file so error file equals mysql real escape oops string error uh, file and the line number is also an integer same as the type so we're just going to cast that to an integer as well so error line equals int int error line. And I do have a video on SQL injection, so if you're not entirely sure why I've done this or what it's for, I guess, you should probably go and watch that because it's quite an important thing. Um, so after that, we just need to insert the row, which we're going to do using some SQL. So I'm going to define this variable called SQL, and it's going to be equal to uh, some SQL code. So we're gonna, the SQL code we're going to use is insert into the table name which is errors and then a list of columns we're inserting into which are the error time, the error type, except we spell error wrong, um, the error, um, error string, string, the error file and the error line and then the values we want to insert values are um, the error time is a timestamp and um, we could either use the PHP time function here obviously not exactly like that which is an example or we can use the MySQL sort of equivalent function which is a bit longer but I prefer to use it in queries just so you don't have to call the PHP time function I'm not sure what the trade-off uh, is for like performance, but I always use this function. Um, it's unix, u-n-i-x, underscore, timestamp, and then brackets, all in capitals, because 
MySQL things are in capitals for some reason. So there we have it. Uh, this function will sort of return um, in. It will return a timestamp. So it's the same as PHP's time function. Um, so the value for the error type is just an integer, so we don't need any quotes. Um, and this is just going to be the error type variable. After that, we have the error string, which is a string, obviously. And this is just going to be the error, um, error string variable. After that, we have the file, which is also a string. And this is just going to be the, oops, the error file variable. And the final one is not a string, it's an integer, so we don't need quotes. Um, and this is the error line variable. Um, one quite important thing, um, it's come up quite a few times on the forum, uh, so far anyway. Um, these things around the table name and the column names are back ticks, not single quotes. So they are, well I'm going to demonstrate but they might still look the same, but they are these and not these. Sort of more angled. Uh, back tick key is above tab on a U UK keyboard. I believe US as well. I don't know about other places because I don't live there. But there you go. Not quotes, back ticks. Um, I've remembered finally. I've been meaning to say that in like every video I've used MySQL in for quite a few weeks. Um, anyway, moving on to the next thing we need to do is actually run this SQL because at the moment all I've done is define it as a variable. So we're going to do that using the MySQL query function. And to the query, to the query function, we just need to pass the SQL that we're going to run, not the DQL, the SQL. So that's it, basically. That should now log any errors that occur. So we can test this at this point by going back to our broken page or our bad page and just hitting reload. See, no error gets output, but does one go into the database? It does. Woo. So you can see what's just happened. Um, we have the uh, error ID, which again, is, I said, I've said this about eight times, I'm going to say it again. Um, the error type and the error time, um, and then the, what the error actually is, which is that the nothing variable is undefined, and it also tells you the, tells you the full path that um, the file is in where the error happened and the line. So going back to my editor for this bad page .php, um, you can see on line five we have echo nothing. And obviously nothing nothing isn't defined. Um, if we just change this to calling the nothing nothing function and reload our broken page or bad page whoops fatal okay sorry uh, edit that was failure that should have been a function that was defined but had wrong parameters that would be a warning so going back to our page let's say we called um, substring but we passed it just an empty array no idea why you do that. Hit reload. See, we don't get anything output. And if we go back to our um, database and just hit browse to reload, you see we've got a new error added. Uh, this is error level two, uh, which I believe is E underscore warning, but we'll find that out in a minute. Um, it's on the same line because it was on the same line, and it just tells you that substra expects at least two parameters one given. Um, I imagine if we added two parameters, and I haven't actually tested this, so I might be completely wrong. So let's just add um, minus seven and hit, oops, wrong page, and hit reload, and then browse the database again. Yeah, you see we get a third error. Uh, substra expects parameter one to be string array dot 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 given. So that's like the error message that would usually appear if you've done something wrong. Um, the reason that fatal error didn't work is because PHP, um, the undefined function, sorry, didn't work is because PHP um, sort of passes through the file first to get the functions. Um, and if it finds one that isn't defined, it can't carry on because of some kind of technical reason, I guess. Um, and then it sort of can't set the custom error handler, so the error handling isn't done. Um, there is a way to handle um, the fatal errors um, and pass errors, actually, but they're quite awkward. And again, not really necessary because um, the user shouldn't really be able to affect that kind of sort of level of code. So, yeah, that's something we won't be doing. Uh, what they might be able to do is affect these. They might be able to sort of set up some kind of wrong parameter to be passed if you're just sending a form variable 
straight to the substring function. Um, so yeah. So uh, I think that's probably about enough for part two. Um, so join me in part three, where we will um, create the system for displaying the errors. Because at the moment, all we're doing is logging them. Uh, hopefully that won't take too long, but I was expecting to be done by now. Okay, so join me in the next part, where we'll do those things.